Most of the you know, national buzz has been how good um, the acquisition of Zadarius Smith has been for the Browns. Um, Albert Breer was on uh, 92.3 Fans, the afternoon drive. This is what he had to say about that trade. I think this is a guy, and you're bringing in a guy now in Zadarius Smith that, that, that has his issues, you know, um, that is very talented, and his last three full seasons in the league has had double-digit sacks. But, um, you know, look, like he wore out his welcome in Green Bay. He, you know, I think pissed a lot of people in Baltimore off when he agreed to go back there last year and then went back on his word. Um, and then war is welcome out in Minnesota. Like, put it this way, like the Dalvin Cook situation, right? Like, the Vikings are working with Dalvin Cook to come to a solution with that on that. And one way or the other, like, that's been a very above the board, like, hey, like, we're going to work something out here or we're going to find you the right place. That's not the way the Zaria Smith thing went with the Vikings. The Vikings were just looking to offload them, you know? And so um, that's sort of what you're bringing in. And look, like, because it's a premium position, um, Sometimes you have to do things like this if you want to try to bring in a guy who's got high-end talent um, if you're not going to be spending over $20 million a year or a high draft pick on a guy. Sort of is where they are right now and trying to find a real threat opposite Miles Garrett. And so you just hope you can keep him in line and make it work, and you hope being around Miles Garrett um, and you know like having the sort of environment that you have We'll make it right for him. But clearly it didn't work out in Green Bay or Minnesota, and it's not like those places have bad environments to offer players. All right, is this Clowney 2.0? Maybe. I mean, maybe. Well, again, we know about dysfunction in Cleveland, Quincy, and it, it, they're looking at it as a one-year deal. To, to find out if Oaken, it gives Oaken Ronku a little bit of time. It gives you the ability to develop Alex Wright, Isaiah Thomas. They're not looking at this as, a, as anything more than a one-year deal is, is my read of it. Well, and even if that, like, you have to take what Albert Bird said there with the grain of salt because he's talking about things that maybe if you're in management, you're not the biggest fan of Zadarius Smith because he doesn't handle contracts how you want him to handle it or he's going to just get the biggest deal or there's no quote-unquote sense of loyalty or whatever there. But I didn't hear anything that would indicate that he would be a locker room problem, right? There is nothing from that from anybody that's played with him. I've actually heard stuff to the contrary of that from people who play with him saying, hey, they love being around Zadarius Smith. Zadarius Smith is a locker room leader. This is a guy who was voted team captain by his team in the first year <laughs> that he was there. So it doesn't, there's nothing that indicates that there's some kind of locker room issue. It, maybe Albert Bear's talking to people who don't really work with the locker room and maybe they work with the numbers and they don't like Zadarius Smith for various reasons. But you have to be careful when you hear things like that because there's a difference between somebody that management doesn't like and somebody that the team don't like. Somebody that management doesn't like doesn't necessarily affect the locker room environment because lo management's not in the locker room. But if the locker room doesn't like him, if he's choosing not to play in certain positions like <laughs> Davion Clowney was, right, where he has beef with the team's best player on defense, like that's a difference. That's not what we're saying with Zedaria Smith. So, you know, I, I just think be careful when we hear reports like that and ask yourself, who is feeding this information? Because I don't think anybody's lying. But you have to understand people have sources from different areas of the team and not everything's coming from the locker room. There's a lot of other places that 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 information can be coming from. And you have to figure out, is that going to be important for the dynamic of the team on the field? The other thing is the Browns are much more equipped to handle that with Jim Schwartz as a defensive coordinator, a guy who has been a head coach. Um, a guy who is universally respected as a defensive coordinator. And, and I'm not trying to I'm not minimizing the role Joe Woods played um, or any of that, but Jim Schwartz is, is a different level of defensive coordinator at this point. Yeah, and, like, that defense last year stunk. Like, what did we talk about last year, too, with Minnesota's defense and the Browns' defense? When you're on a team that stinks, nobody's happy to be there, like, it, especially on defense. It's one thing if you go three and out on offense, right? Because if you stink on offense, you barely play. If you stink on defense, dog, you're out there all the time getting beat up. Like, it is different. Nobody's going to like each other. Everybody is hurt and everybody's getting beat. No, of course people weren't happy. If anybody was happy with Minnesota's defense last year, that would be a bigger question mark.
right? You know, like the dysfunction last year, that is what it is. But I'm actually happy people were frustrated with how bad that defense was because there I was like, nah, man, it's cool. Let's let's relax. The vibes are great right now. Like when the defense is absolutely a disaster, then that tells me that nobody really cares. <laughs>